What's up, y'all? I'm back. It's so funny. Let me tell you something. I, that just reminded me of Rodney because my son, I was watching, he was like, does he say this is Rodney and I'm back on every video? I said, yes. And why my son was playing every, the beginning of all of Rodney's videos. <laughs> this is Rodney and I'm back. <laughs> to Rodney the voice hello I thought that was so funny because he was like and then sometimes Rodney be like and I'm back <laughs> shout out to Rodney he's the cutest thing ever ever okay Tammy and Walker what are we talking about we want to talk about Tammy and Walker or we want to talk about Nene and 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 the and the girls what time is it anyways um Tammy and Walker all right um let's talk about them all right okay it's on all right it's on it's on it's on okay so tammy and walker got a show deb is gonna be on the show i want to watch it and i'm gonna tell you why i want to watch it you know because i was like I, did i want to watch love goals but love goals is too i i'm i might go in and out maybe try and catch it on youtube or something like that because i just don't want to watch althea and benzino i feel like I don't even know what they're trying to do. Like y'all don't even like each other. So I don't even, I don't want to watch it. I just, because I think I, I would just, it would be just too much for me um, watching them. But I am going to watch Tammy and Waka's show because I like the therapist that they're going to use. He's the therapist from the show, the therapist on Vice, on Viceland, um, Dr. Siri Satnam. And he is a holistic therapist. He's very, I don't know if you've ever seen, go online to watch the therapist on Viceland. You can watch some of his um, technique and the way that he approaches um, situations and how he speaks to me. He does a lot of breathing. He does, he pulls angel cards. Like, and he's, and when I saw him, I was like, okay, I'm watching this because I think he is a wonderful, I think he's a, a wonder, I love his approach. I love his approach. So that is the reason why I'm wa watching Tammy and Walker. So they're going through renovations. Tammy done spent $54,000 on some Instagram company and they scammed them out of the money. Deb shows up to the house and I wrote typical mother-in-law because I just, I just don't understand why she's playing this role of this overbearing mother-in-law who helicopters over her adult son. It's just so typical, so stereotypical. And since he's been married, you know, Deb talks like she eats cigarettes since he's been married. I can't wait. Is, is Rox and um, Bondi going to do, are they reviewing this show? I think I saw Bondi reviewing it. I hope they do Deb's voice because, bitch, that just hurt my throat. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to leave that to y'all. She says she don't have no time for her son since he's been married. Typical, like that typical shit. I don't get that fucking shit that's crazy. But then I have to think about Deb. She's lost sons and stuff like that. So that might be the reason why she's like hovering over him. I don't know, but it's it's more stereotypical than it is. Like, I really want to nurture my son because I've lost my other children. I'm not getting that vibe from Deb. I'm getting a more of a, I'm going to be the stereotypical big foot, flat foot fucking mother-in-law with the fucking cigarette you know emphysema ass voice and you know bronchitis ass talking ass mama and just i was just like why is she why don't you get along with tammy why don't you get along with tammy she puts up with your son's shit like what girl i was like uh uh i don't i did not like the way they was treating tammy i didn't like it she said that you know deb was like family is everything i guess it was tammy's turn to cook she didn't cook i'm like okay so why don't you cook why why wouldn't you be prepared to back her up if she needed backup or she wasn't able because to me y'all y'all running tammy like a damn dog like a mule you running her like a mule do you hear me what is wrong with them they are crazy. What is wrong with you guys? What's wrong with you guys? Okay, I'm back. Um, So, Tammy was like, okay, so Deb was like, family is everything. You know, when I was family, every Sunday we go to grandma's house. I'm like, why are you expecting Tammy to fill this crazy role? I don't know. I thought it was very weird. Anyways. Tammy at one point was like, I'm tired. I do all this stuff. I do this. I do that. And Deb was like, that's a wife and a mother's job. Like, it was really weird. Like, the shit was weird. 
And then, and you know, Deb just comes over. No boundaries, right? She just comes over. Tammy goes, do you just pop up at your friend's house? She's like, you're not my friend. You're, I guess you're my family. But still, you have to have boundaries. Like, your mom can't just be popping up. At least call and say you're on the way or whatever. And then she's in there. And then Waka t looks at Tammy and says, I'm hungry. Nigga, you are a grown-ass fucking man. Fix yourself something to eat. Do you mean to tell me you're going to starve waiting for somebody to fix you a motherfucking plate? And you're not gonna and you're going to say it when your mom is standing right here? Dude, don't do no shit like that. Because she already thinks something about Tammy. She already thinks something about Tammy. She already has some issue, some made-up issue with her. Because she doesn't like the way she talks to Waka. That she don't like the way, I don't like the way she talks to you. He needs love. He comes from a strong mother. So now all of a sudden, since you was a strong ass bitch while he was growing up and you couldn't give him the nurturing and the love as a mother, you want his wife to do it. And get mad at her because she was she didn't do what you were supposed to do. You want you want her to be his mama too. But then you want to get jealous because he doesn't spend time with you. Like that shit is crazy. Deb, that shit is crazy. Like for real, it's crazy. At one point, Deb says it's our nation our nationality. You're supposed to be barefoot and pregnant. I don't know where they come from. Where where is Waka and Deb at me from? Where are they from? Because what nationality wants they women barefoot and pregnant? Like, I don't, I didn't understand that. And Deb wants a baby. Deb, like, it's all this typical shit. Like, Deb and Tammy's mother want a grandchild. And they tell them, we are not ready. We don't want a kid right now. That's not what we want. We don't want that. And they're, like, trying to pressure them into having a baby. To the point where Deb was like, we made a deal. Bitch, you ain't making deals on my fucking pussy. Are you crazy? Like, girl, uh-uh. I was like, this shit is crazy to me. We don't have time to have a baby. Tammy's career, she she's making these songs. Tammy has a good voice to me. Um, She's working with Sean Garrett. Um, He tells her, you need to level up. And then he tells her something about, you know, you're married to Waka Flocka. She's like, first of all, I don't want to talk about that shit anymore. I don't want to talk about, oh, he did this to me. Then I went back to him. Now I'm not dealing with him. Now all the stages of grief that happened after a man has embarrassed you or cheated on you or whatever the fuck. Tammy is like, girl, I'm tired of talking about that shit. I got a new set of problems. I, and I was married before Waka. Waka's not my first marriage. Did y'all know there was a life before him? I'm tired of talking about him. I don't need to talk about him. I was like, yes, Tammy, you better stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself. And then they start talking about the baby situation. And, and Sean Garrett was like, no. He was like, no, ain't no babies. I, I don't even know why they try. I don't know. I think it's weird to try to pressure a woman to have kids. I think it's so fucking weird. Like, who the fuck are you? Are you going to take care of this goddamn baby? Like, why are you? Uh-uh. No, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. They She goes to pick up her daughter, Charlie, who was 14 at school and she brings all these kids to this little ass car and she's like where are you going with all these kids tammy is like real mom she's like where are you going with all these kids and i don't know all these kids mother they're not getting in the car with me and she explains to her daughter look y'all we're not regular people we have access and influence i don't want to get somebody's kid in my car and something happen to them and their parents think that they're gonna get something out of us because of who we are you cannot be bringing people that i don't know in my house around all of that and i'm like yes tammy you better tell her and she was like, you are doing too much. Tammy is in real mom. And I like the fact that she's not trying to be fake with these cameras around or anything like that. She's just talking to her daughter like whatever. Like, yes, she can work on the way that she speaks. But she's like in real mom mode, like asking her questions, just all of that. And she's 14 years old. So she's doing some resisting. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, you know, gaining independence, which looks like resistance in some way. So she said Waka's been in her life since she was four years old. So he's basically raising her. And he's like, I get it when it's when you have a daughter. I get it. It's sad that, that so many men don't understand the and value and honor women and girls in a way until they have 
uh, they have um, a first hand, you know, it's a one degree of separation between they have some ownership over a daughter. Or a, you don't get it. You have a mom. You have a mother. You forgot about her. You have sisters. You forgot about her. You don't understand how women should be honored until you have one of your own. And then when she becomes a woman, you don't. Now, all of a sudden, she's on her own again, like T.I. with his daughter. All, as soon as you have sex, you're an adult. No, children, kids have sex. It should be had. That's It's natural. It's, a, it's, it's normal. It's natural. But you want to keep, you want to keep, you don't want to honor children and that are girls until you have one of your own. I get it now. I understand why little girls when my I, their father would be so crazy about their daughters that's what waka was saying like his mother didn't teach him clearly didn't teach him hey this is not how you treat girls or women or whatever so you going out and then your mom can do everything she can to instill these values but society has a different message for boys understand it has a different message for boys as it relates to girls and growing up for to young men and young women there's a you could you can do whatever you everything you could do the best you can in trying to raise your son to respect and honor girls, young women, women, and, and on up to whatever. But society doesn't have the same message. Society doesn't. It they, they just it just doesn't. She starts asking her how like she brings these people over the house, her friends, but she calls her downstairs and she's bothering her. She's doing just like mothers do. You got friends over now. You want to come downstairs and ask me a bunch of now you want me to come downstairs and ask me a bunch of goddamn questions when I have friends over. Are you trying to embarrass me? What are you trying to do, Tammy? She's like, well, How are your grades? When was the last time you've been to work? Why don't you know these answers? She's 14. Why don't you know when was the last time she'd been to work? Why don't you know what her grades are? I get my son's grades emailed to me almost every other day. I have a, a progress on how he's doing in class. Every other day, I don't understand. And you got your guy, and my kid goes to a public school. You got your kid in these private ass schools and you don't know how her fucking grades is going? Okay. All right, girl. Deb and Mona. Um, Mona is Tammy's mom. Deb and Mona are friends. They sitting there talking about how they gonna get Tammy pregnant. I just don't like it. I don't like it. Talking about they can get some Geritol and the mother, um, Tammy's mother who is adorable. She was like, you know, just have sex three times a day for three months or some. She said something crazy. Yeah, you gonna get pregnant now if you gonna if you gonna be fucking all day. Then yes, you probably will get pregnant. Um, but and then, and then her grandmother, I mean, her mother was like, they want to, they said, I never heard of Geritol making people get pregnant or whatever. And then Tammy's mom was like, I hope that baby don't come out looking like an old person. <laughs> I was like, what lady? That shit was so funny to me. Her mother is cute. But, um, Deb says to Tammy's mom, I think it's something bigger. That's, they, they don't want to have a baby because it's something else going on. And it's something wrong is what Deb is saying. It's something bigger and they just need to come clean about it. So she thinks because Tammy doesn't want to have a baby, even though Waka is saying we are not ready and she's saying we're not ready. I'm busy. I'm tired. I already got these things. I need to get this, uh, you know, get this situated. Look at our house. You know what I'm saying? They're doing renovations, stuff like that. And you want her to have a baby. But because she doesn't want to have a baby, you assume that there's something wrong. I don't know what Charlie did, but she's on punishment. She hasn't been going to work. Some she's on punishment. So she has her clean out the dishwasher, clean out the refrigerator, doing all this stuff. She has on these cute little shoes and her. And then she, Tammy was like, don't nobody ever buy me nothing. You, I, I, I'm glad you can get shoes and stuff like that. And so she says that Tammy doesn't take her to work and she needs transportation. That's why she hasn't been to work. And then in the interview, Tammy was like, do I get blamed for everything? And then Waka looks at her and says, you're the mother. I was like, what? Nigga, did he just say that? Like, do I get blamed for everything? Yeah, you're the mom. Of course you're going to get blamed for everything. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? And then he was like, I pay all the bills. She was like, what do you do? He was like, I pay all the bills. And she was like, oh, do you do? And then he tells her, you could do more. And I was like, what? Um, I was like, that's crazy. She gets up out of the interview and walks away because she got mad. But then 
they're talking to the d girl and they're like, why don't you want to ride the bus to school? She was like, because when I get on a bus, all the white kids are staring at me and asking me questions about Waka and stuff like that. And she was like, okay, well, do you say something back to them? Like, and I'm kind of, I, I kind of agree with Tammy. Like, I, 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 a lot of the times when I was watching this, I, I was seeing, but I could see where people were both sides were coming from i get it the little girl's 14 she don't want to get on the bus with a bunch of white people looking at her crazy and, but then she also doesn't want to say anything either because she doesn't know how to respond and that's what tammy comes in and was like girl are you talking shit to them are you talking shit back talk shit back because you're gonna have to learn how to talk shit back to people that's just unfortunately the society and the world that we live in you are going to have to talk shit to somebody at one point some point in your life and school is where you learn how to do this shit right especially with people messing with you and I see, but I understand both sides. I, you know, you be in situations where somebody is messing with you and you need somebody else to come step in or you do, or you fight yourself. You learn you. That's what you learn. These are the times that you learn it. Um, she tells Tammy, I'm going to call child protective services on you. Tammy says, I'm a, and I'm a child protect your ass. Keep playing with me. I said, yes, Tammy, you better tell her. I said, she sounds like a real mom. She does like, y'all, I'm not playing with you. Don't play with me. She keeps telling her, stop playing with me. Um, Waka doesn't like they. He says that they have different parenting styles. Where he, I guess, he plays the good cop and she plays the bad cop. I love that Tammy has a manager. Waka is not her manager. She has her own manager, and he seems to go with her everywhere. She, he's always in the studio when she's in the studio. But then we get into Waka talking about his stressors and his pressures of um, being a husband, being a provider, and being a father. Um, and trying to be a role model. And he gets up at one point and he wants to talk to Tammy. And he tells the cameras, you guys got to stop. Like, y'all got to stop filming, okay? Because they haven't, like, this is some serious conversation. We don't know what the, what was said or whatever. But he's stressed out because she is going over budget with her project. And he's basically financing her project. And um, I get it. I, I'm sorry, I get it. Because... Not only are there pressures for women, there are pressures for men who take this role that society has given them when they take it seriously. There are pressures with being a good role model, with trying to be a good person. Because like I said, society has a different message for men. And when a man is saying, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be this husband, I'm going to do this. There's a lot of stressors that come with that. Trying to maintain your household, all of this stuff, and you're doing everything society told you to do. There's a lot it's a lot of leniency on a man's side and it's hard on women but there are stressors men have stressors and i'm glad that they're showing this so he says he wants to go over deb's house because he wants to talk about his marriage pressures of the of the marriage basically and i love that they're showing her pressures and issues and then showing him him and the pressures and the issues that he's dealing with i i appreciate that um, he says to his mother, I have too many dictators in my life. I got too many people telling me what to do. Basically playing the role model, being the provider, being the husband, doing all of these things. And he's talking to his mom and he was like, sometimes I hate my wife sometimes. And to me, I don't feel like it was nothing wrong with what he was saying. He's talking to his mother. The problem that I saw was when Deb was like, well, I'm going to talk to her. No. And he was telling her, no, I'm talking to you. You're not going to talk to my wife before I talk to her about issues that I have with her. You're not going to do that. And I was like, yes, I, he's trying to draw boundaries with this woman. And she clearly doesn't have any boundaries like a lot of black parents don't. They lack humility. They lack the, they don't, they, they think that they have reign and access to you at any time of any day. I don't know where that comes from. I can only attribute it to slavery that's the only thing that you think that you have dominion over a person for their whole life and you don't have to respect boundaries even as adults and i think that's it where a lot of strain between black adult children and their parents come in because they their parents have this i could do whatever i want to you i can talk to you any kind of way you can't talk to me any kind of way but i can talk to you any kind of way even as an adult like the shit is crazy and he's talking to his mother and telling her you know I, ha I contribute 
to the the things that are the issues that are going on in my relationship. And Deb is really trying to figure out a way to angle it to where she can blame Tammy. And he's trying to explain to her, Tammy is this way because I have done these things to her. She's aggressive. She's masculine. She she flies off the handle with her mouth because I haven't been the person that should protect her. So sometimes I'm her adversary. And when I say things to her, she's she is getting in stance like she's fighting someone. That's why you get this aggressive and she's reckless with her tongue because I've contributed to this behavior. I've made her not trust me. And I'm glad that he's like able to see that. But his mother's like, mm -mm, that's Tammy. That's Tammy. That's her fault. Like she's doing something. You, It's not all you. Why you want to take the blame? Like it's like, girl, he's trying to tell you. You know, even they showed a clip from him when they were in marriage boot camp. And he was like, well, what did you do to Tammy? He was like, I, I, I was being a boy, is what he said. And his idea of being a boy and being a man is treating his woman in a dishonorable way. But then having a another woman who suffers from that inter internally and who thinks it's okay and somehow some, it's her fault and enables him and allows him to do these things and doesn't see that she's probably aggressive with him because he hasn't always protected her. And she was married to a person before who was physically abusive to her. So she might be a little rough. She might be a little hard when a man says something crazy to her or talks to her crazy. So I might need to go to therapy, he tells his mother. And, he's, and she was like, well, y'all need to go together. And he was like, no. And I could understand, yes, they need to go together, but they need to go separately too. Because like Waka said, I need the tools to learn how to communicate with my wife. Deb says, you don't want to go to therapy because when you go to therapy, you're going to figure out what your triggers are. And when you figure out what your triggers are, that other person is going to start triggering you or figure, basically understanding you in a, in a way to trigger you when they're already triggered by each other. She's already triggered by him. He's cheated on her. He's been disloyal, been dishonorable to his wife. So she has a slick mouth with him and she needs to work on fixing that too, healing from that too. I understood what Deb was saying. Y'all need to go together. Y'all need to go together. But I understand what Waka was saying. I need to go alone because I need to learn. I need the tools to learn how to deal with my wife because clearly I need a professional because my mama ain't giving me no good ideas. She's trying to tell me to get this woman pregnant to add to the stressors of my life because she wants a baby and I'm telling her that I'm contributing to the problems as to why my wife speaks to me this way. I've done things to her. And she, her mother is like, that's how, Tammy, Tammy, she got something to do with the union. Why are you taking all the blame? I was like, girl, this is a mess. This is a mess. And then, where, where am I? Okay, so then Waka says to Deb, you basically can't give me no advice because you've never been married. Deb was like, I don't care. That that paper don't have nothing to do with it. And this is where, like I said, like, Deb ain't dumb. She just has ideas and ideologies and ways about her that is very archaic and detrimental. And it doesn't serve the woman. It, all, it serves the man. It's what we call internalized misogyny, where you see the man's perspective. Whatever you do, you're protecting the man, the, his sanctity, his legacy, his everything you protect him before and that's her son too so she has this idea already this woman needs to be barefoot and pregnant even though you're telling me you're showing up to my house showing up to their house unannounced you're telling her i can show up to my your house unannounced i want you to have a baby then you're telling him something some some they're telling you we don't want the baby some she's saying something is wrong because you're not allowing another stressor in your life a newborn baby in your life to stress you out he tells her you ain't never been married she was like i don't give a damn a paper it, that paper don't mean shit somebody's behavior is somebody's behavior and i was like thank you thank you a lot of people get think getting married is going to somehow erase like it's like you uh, uh, achievement unlocked and you get into a new and, and you go into a new level of a game and you're automatically all of your fucked up behaviors and dumbass ways are erased. And that's not true. 
And I'm glad that she said that. And you can't discount a woman just because she doesn't have, she's never been married. Doesn't mean she hasn't been in relationships. Marriage is just an agreement that we're not going to cheat on each other. We're going to be together. That's what, that's all it is. That's all it is. And you can do that without that. Right. And then the other implications that come along with it. But at the end of the day, you cannot discount this lady by saying you ain't never been married so you can't give me no advice i want to seek help from a professional she's like i'm gonna have a conversation with tammy he was like don't do that i'm not ta i'm talking to you about what i'm dealing with and you want to somehow go find a way to tell her my son is having all these issues and da 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 no you're not about to do that don't go and talk to her the producer steps in and the producer was like well why do you think you want to go to therapy? He was like, what are you talking about, dude? Are you a professional? Like, he's another one. Are you a professional? He was like, no, but I'm married. He's like, my marriage is it's not the same as yours, bruh. You ain't going to talk to me. This is how we talk to each other. This is how uh, this is how we talk to each other. We're not on some old, oh, why? how are you feeling? This and that. This is how we talk to her. We black. This is how we talk to each other. Right, wrong, or indifferent this is how we talk to each other. We might need some tools to help us talk to each other, but you, I don't know you, nigga, you a producer. And then the other girl starts, um, she chimes in. He was like, I wasn't even talking to you, y'all. This is not how we're going to do this. This is how me and my mother talk to each other. Y'all not about to do this. Te and then Deb is like, um, you want, he leaves. He walks out of the room and she, Deb was like, um, do you want to, no, the producer goes, do you want to go let him cool off? Do you um, want him just to be done, let him go? And she was like, I, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Do you, Deb? Do you know what's going on, girl? It's you, bitch. You need to grow some boundaries, get some boundaries. And Walker needs to learn how to set some boundaries. And maybe in his therapy, he the therapist can tell him, look, your mama... You need to set some boundaries with her, honey. She's not going to get it. She's not going to understand it because she's from a place where huh, full range access to do whatever you want to this person and you feel like you have access to them forever and you should be able to talk to them wherever and, and, and just, you know, ignore their boundaries or disrespect their boundaries. And then in addition, enable me to treat my wife in a certain way and figure out a way to blame her no your mom you need something I'm, and i can't wait to watch and see how this therapist works with them and anyways that's it for my time y'all go watch it um but it's very typical it's like again deb is the overbearing you know disrespecting boundaries mother-in-law and we and we're gonna see how this works out anyways y'all that's my time I'll be back with the Real Housewives of Atlanta video. Peace.